Well, it's new radio day and I have the ICOM IC7610 here. Um, I've been waiting such a long time to get this radio. For those that have watched my channel, you'd know that I've used in my shack for quite a while, the IC7300, which is kind of like the baby brother of this radio. But I decided to do a bit of an upgrade um, and get this radio. And there's actually a couple of reasons why I decided to get this radio over others. And I'm going to go through those in this video today. And we're going to do a little bit of a an unboxing and also to show you that even though this radio is still what it's about probably seven or eight years old now it's still a very very good radio indeed and i couldn't pass up the opportunity to get this because uh they had not only a sale on whereby um, if you purchase one of these in the month of february you also got the icom sp41 external speaker so i'm like well i can't pass that up and get that for free which is good uh, but also the prices have just gone up on the 1st of March here in Australia. So the IC7610 um, is part of that as well. So I wanted to get it before the, uh, the prices actually went up. Uh, so that was also a big factor. Now, this is not a cheap radio. Um, I'm still uh, looking at that credit card bill and wondering how I'm going to pay that off. But, I mean, you only live once and uh, I'm going to have a whole heap of fun with this radio now. I'm also not going to get rid of my 7300. The 7300, I think, is still probably the best starter HF radio that you can buy. It is so popular. There's so many people that have the 7300 and they're so happy with them. I'm completely happy with my 7300, but that's going to now serve a different purpose. I'm going to use that for portable operation. Uh, when I, I've also got my 705 as well. That sort of does my soda operation and stuff when I don't quite need... Um, 100 watts, but the 7300 uh, I, I use quite regularly as well when I'm out portable, so that's going to be dedicated for that now. Um, and maybe also to a secondary radio in the shack. So here we go. We're going to do the the big... I don't want to cut too deep into the, the box. Always got to save the box. Increases the resale value. Oh. Now, this is a big box. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It is very, very big. Oh, that's, that's kind of like... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Manual, I'm going to be spending a lot of my time reading that. Microphone, power cable, fuses. Okay, well this, actually this radio is a little bit smaller than I expected. How am I gonna get this out? Oh, there we go. Right, put the radio down on the bench. Don't need the box anymore. Let's get that out of the way. Oh, oh, ladies and gentlemen, that is a radio. Oh, ho, 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 ho. so here's my 7300 above the 7610 just for a little bit of a comparison to just show you the difference. Um, obviously, the 7610 is a little bit wider, much bigger touch screen, that's for sure, and a lot more buttons. Now, the 7610, a lot of people say, well, why don't you just buy two 7300s? Because the price of these is, well, actually, you can probably buy about two and a half of, uh, two and a half 7300s before you get to a 7610. But it's not entirely true that this radio is just two of these in one. And what I mean by that is that this has two separate individual receivers in it. Uh, there's also a whole function, a whole bunch of other functions that you don't have with the 7300, with the 7610. 7610 has a slightly better receive performance on the Sherwood report, so that's another thing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, apart from the physical difference, obviously, the 7610 has a lot of different, uh, sorry, has a lot of the same similar feels as the 7300 with a couple of extra bonuses in. And that's kind of what won me over the line with, uh, with getting this. But there's uh, quite a few um, buttons here. So like these band buttons here on the right hand side, they're just a touch screen in the 7300, so you don't have those. So here, at least you can switch the bands really quickly. Uh, the tuning knob's a whole lot bigger than the 7300. Uh, obviously, I mentioned the massive touch screen like this. This touch screen is good, but this is really, really good. Like, look at the size of that. Oh, oh look at that. And the all important. If I can get a corner. Oh, that felt good. You can do a whole heap of other things. This has got two antenna ports, and I'll show you the back shortly. It's got two antenna ports. It's got display out. 
Um, it's got an IQ out as well, so you could drive an SDR with the 7300. I think that's another board that you have to put in there. You can also GPS lock this as well, um, even though it's an HF radio. The, uh, geez, the, the knobs are a little bit different feel to the 7300, a bit more tension on the 7300s compared to the 7610s. Um, you can have your analog sort of looking S meter as well. This one's only got that um, bar S meter um, on the 70. 300 like that if you're moving from something like this from this series of radios to the 7300 to the 7610 like i am all the menus are pretty much the same so if i go into menu here it's all very similar looking um, if you're not familiar with icom they have used this type of menu system for quite their last few radios for quite a while now and um, it's very easy to navigate around as far as the learning curve of learning how to drive another radio it's good because I don't need to worry too much about having to uh, differentiate between different functions in the radio, like if it's in a different spot or something like that. It's more than likely going to be um, in the same or a very similar spot. Again, as I mentioned, the familiarity with the menus and the fact that I'm very happy with the 7300 meant that it was a lot easier to pick the 7610 over, say, a Yaesu equivalent like the FT DX10 or the next model, what's the FT101 as well. Two antennas, so you've got um, two main antennas, sorry, here, antenna one and an antenna two that you can switch, so you don't need an antenna switch. They've got uh, SO239s in the back there. You've also got an additional receive antenna in here, so you've got a receive antenna input, and there's also a loop output there for that receive antenna. So you could have something like a uh, your main wire dipole or a Yagi on one antenna, uh, maybe an antenna for another band, say maybe HF on this one, six meters on this one, or you could have uh, two HF antennas, maybe a wide dipole and a Yagi on this one, and then you might have a loop or a receiving antenna specifically for receiving uh, low, well, for reducing noise. Maybe you've got that on here that you don't transmit on, so you can have that on that receive antenna. Then you can loop that out. You can even have another SDR receiver on that uh, antenna. You've also got a reference in, so that's where you can GPS lock the radio to 10 megahertz. You've got a transverter input. Most of my transverters that I use for microwave bands don't use HF or six meters as they're driving um, IF. So, but I mean, if you do have one of those transverters then you can definitely use that as well. Uh, you've got here LAN. So the 7610 has an inbuilt server so that you can remotely control this radio directly by plugging in straight into the internet there, and you can use the ICOM RSBA1 software, you can use the SDA, uh, SDR control, SDR control app, which I've also reviewed on this channel. Uh, you can use Ham Radio Deluxe, all those sort of things. The 7300, you couldn't do that because you'd have to plug in a USB cable into a PC and have the server software running on the PC. So you'd have to have a dedicated PC running all the time to actually be able to use that to remotely control it. But the fact that this has got the LAN port on the back makes that a whole heap easier. You've got all your connections for your keyers and your, all that other stuff as well. Your accessory ports here for switching your amplifiers and all that sort of stuff. Two USBs here. Now I believe that one of these USBs is for your normal COM CAT control uh, that you would use with like FT8, WSJTX, that sort of thing. And the other one I think is an IQ output so you can actually drive uh, another SDR receiver um, directly out of the USB, so that's a, that's a tap off point there. There's two external speaker outputs here, A and B, and they're gonna go into the SP41 uh, when I um, get that out. And you've got your ALC, your send ports here too. The main one that I'm also gonna be using here is this external display. So this is a DVI port output, and I'm going to be running that into a capture card into my PC using one of these cables, a DVI to HDMI cable. So I can plug in the DVI directly into the back of the radio, and then I can plug my HDMI into my capture software um, and then I can do streaming and you'll be able to see that seven inch display uh, on the front on my streaming software while I'm streaming on YouTube or you can also plug that into an external monitor as well. The resolution is limited on this but it's still um, well and truly big enough for you to drive and to see that on a bigger display. A couple of extra features there that I'm specifically going to use. Again, I'm not knocking the 7300 at all. It's been a fantastic radio 
but the 7610 is just that next step up. Now this is the SP41. This is the external speaker that I got free with this radio because it was part of that. I don't know much about the speaker other than apparently it's really good um, on the air. So it's a perfect thing to pair with the 7610. If I'm getting a new radio and I'm gonna get a new speaker, then sure. I've never used external speakers before. I've used headphones, but apparently this just makes things sound a whole heap better in the shack. That's quite a nice looking speaker here. It looks like it's got the cutoff frequencies high and low, so you can tailor it for your individual needs. You've got your input, two inputs, A and B. So I think that you can mix the speaker uh, outputs or the individual outputs of the 7610, yep, into each input into the back of the, the speaker. So you can turn those on or off, depending on which input you want to use, which side of the radio you want to use. All right, so 7300 in and out of the way. Um, now, am I going to be able to fit everything on this bench? I've got my light here for streaming. So I'm going to have to move that over because the radio is a little bit bigger. I'm hoping that this fits quite nicely onto the top of the table here, which it does. And doesn't that look sweet. Maybe I can also run the double stack. I'll run the 7300 above the 7610 just to transfer some settings. The main settings are around the waterfall that I want to make sure that the waterfall, I'm, I'm used to the waterfall on this radio, so I want to make the waterfall the same on the 7610. It's just so that I'm used to it. Um, and I have done a video on configuring your waterfall to your custom needs, which, uh, I mean, I've got my settings and I like the way that my waterfall looks, but I'll put a link at the end of the video to check out the waterfall settings if you want to make yours um, better because out of the box they look a little bit bland. Let me know in the comments below if you own an IC7610 or if you've ever owned one in the past and what feature you thought was the best thing on that radio. Maybe there's something that I've missed or something that I should really, really know about. Let me know in the comments below because I'd be really interested to get the most out of this radio. Okay, so I've got my uh, 7610 now hooked up to my streaming card. And as you can see here, I've got the display of the 7610 showing. It is this resolution. I'm currently recording in 4K at the moment, but I can extend this right out. And like, I mean, for YouTube, that's perfectly fine. Look at that. That's uh, very easy to see. The waterfall looks nice and crisp as well. Um, I've adjusted the waterfall colors as well to suit... Uh, what I want there too. So just having a look there on 10 meters, I can um, scroll across and I can see uh, there was a station there a minute ago. Um, but yeah, this is going to be really good for, for streaming. I'll be able to do regular live streams. There was a station there a moment ago, but yeah. Sounds like an American station, but yes, I'll be able to use this now for streaming, which is going to be fantastic to be able to do uh, regular live streams. And that's why I don't have to also point the camera at the uh, at the screen. I can just uh, stream to my heart's content using the streaming card. So this is uh, this is really good now. I've obviously got all of the menus. I've got to go through and I've got to set some of these menus up. All I'm used to all of this stuff. It's the same as what it is, is in the 7300. Um, I might just need to adjust some things in here to do with my uh, cat control for WSJTX. But this is really, really handy. Oh, that was the other thing here. Mic input DC bias. That's another feature that the 7610 has that the 7300 doesn't. Uh, that means it's a lot easier to hook up to a wider variety of microphones. You don't need a blocking capacitor to block the DC, so I'll be able to use my Shaw microphone here uh, directly, which will be good. Uh, I can turn that reference on and off. Uh, I can go into display, and I can turn the external display on and off. So there you go. Now I've got no signal, and then it turns itself back on. Uh, display resolution. Here we go. So, it's, so that's showing 800 by 480. I can change that to... 800 by 600, so a bit wider. So there's the uh, wider look. That's kind of probably a little bit closer to what the 7610's screen is as far as the aspect ratio is concerned, but I'm going to go back to the previous resolution 
because I think that that actually looks probably a little bit better. I've got to read the manual because there is so much uh, different. I think I don't. I'm I'm still trying to figure out how to turn on the the other um, the other sub band. Uh, the 7610 is going to be fantastic in the shack. It's not quite two 7300s in one. For those who are haven't already noticed i'm a bit of an icon person i love the icon radios i've got the 7300 the 7610 now the 9700 and the 705 behind me as well i've done reviews on all of these radios and i've also done other videos like for instance how to set up your waterfall uh, 